All right. So, as Chris said, we're going to be focusing for the first few months, I guess, on on the um, the attitudes as we should live. All right. And the and the um, the the thing we're going to talk about today is an attitude of looking forward. You know, there's things in our past that we need to let them go, let them go, and 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 look, be excited about our future and the year 2021. And we're going to look at Philippians 3. 13, verses 13 and 14. And we'll get to that. We'll, we'll read that as we go on. Well, so, you know, it's a time again, you know, we're in a fit of optimism. You know, we, many of us make those great promises to ourselves about what we're going to do in the new year. And many, many we usually abandon in the, in the second week in January. I mean, it's already the third and and how many have already, uh, you know, abandoned and there's, there's New Year's resolutions. Um, and if we're honest, how many of you kept to the diet last year? You know, and how many of you actually kept exercise in past February? Well, this year, I'm determined that uh, it's going to be different for me. It's going to be different. I made a New Year's resolution that I know I'm going to be able to keep for the whole of 2021. I'm going to eat more and exercise less. And I'm absolutely certain that I'm going to be able to fulfill that. So, but seriously, this morning I want to talk to you about some resolutions and some commitments which I guarantee you will make a radical difference in our lives if we, if we just follow through on them. And in fact, what I... What I want to do is to offer a way of starting the new year in a way which will significantly change our lives. And here's what I want to suggest to you. If you will make four commitments, four commitments that God in his word encourages us to make. And again, I guarantee you that the start of 2021 could become one of the most significant events in your life. In fact, um, I tell you that if, if you follow God's advice, that 2021 could be the best year of your life this far. So I want to challenge you to make four commitments for this new year. And here they are. First is to commit yourself to forget your failures. When we look at Philippians, Philippians 3, 13 and 14, it reads, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And that advice from God's word has stood the test of time. I don't know of any more relevant and practical advice for us at the start of 2021 than that advice that I just read. We don't have to live our lives in prison by our past. All of us have failed in some way in our lives over the last year. Probably we won't see our failures recorded for, on, on a history channel on TV, but they are recorded in our hearts and in our minds. For many of us, our failures are painful memories. Maybe for you, it's a memory of how you failed in a relationship. You made the wrong decisions, said and did the wrong things, and, and the relationship ended. And some of you who are parents probably know that you failed your children in some way. Some of you children in the balcony listening are aware that you may have failed your parents in some way. None of our children here at Cape Island, though. It's more likely, more than likely that many of us know that we have failed ourselves in some ways. And all of us should know that in some way we have failed God. What God's Word is saying to us here is that we must not allow ourselves to be bogged down by our past failures. That we have not that we have got not have to dwell on our past so much that it stops us from moving forward into the future that God has for us. 
I think that the start of the new year is a good time for us to rise to this challenge. To say to yourself, I am going to, with the help of God, forget my past. I'm going to stop torturing myself about what I did or didn't do. And this year is a good time to stop being chained to our past failures. God is saying here in His Word that He doesn't want you to go through your life branding yourself as a failure. Jesus Christ died on, the, on, on that cruel cross of Calvary so that we could be forgiven. And when we become Christians, that forgiveness becomes a reality in our lives. And when we have received Christ's forgiveness, it allows us to forgive ourselves and forget our failures. Maybe you need to do that right now this morning. Maybe you need to accept Jesus' forgiveness and then forgive yourself. And the second commitment for 2021 is commit yourselves to give up your grudges. Commit yourself to give up your grudges. I want you to listen to these words from the book of Colossians because in them you'll hear the second challenge I believe God wants us to rise to if you want to make 2021 a significant turning point in your life. <clears throat> Colossians 3.13 Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Did you catch that challenge? God in those words is challenging us directly and personally to give up our grudges. That is what he means when he says forgive each other. Whatever quarrels you have against one another, forgive each other. A grudge is a deep, ongoing resentment that we cultivate in our hearts against someone else. <clears throat> a grudge is an unforgiven spirit that leads to unforgiven attitudes and unforgiven actions. Now I know you know what I'm talking about. Harboring a grudge is about nursing a dislike for someone. And what you need to know is that grudges are dangerous because they are destructive. Grudges destroy marriages. Grudges destroy families. Friendships. Grudges split churches. Grudges split churches. So let's be honest enough to admit that one of the problems of the church in general is the grudges that Christians hold against one another. I want to tell you this morning that if you know you are holding a grudge, a grudge against someone, then God has something to say to you. He says, give it up. Give it up. I want to remind you that grudges are not just destructive. They are also self-destructive. They are also self-destructive. And when you hold a grudge against someone, you will hurt yourself as much and perhaps more than you will hurt the person you are holding it against. As I was preparing for this <clears throat> sermon, I read a tragic example of just how destructive grudges are. <clears throat> Excuse me. A man was killed by a partial bomb and then a couple committed suicide a week later. It turned out that the couple who had committed suicide had sent the bomb because of a grudge that the man had against his intended victim that stretched all the way back to school. And ultimately that man's grudge destroyed his victim's life also. And then it destroyed him and his wife's life too. And make no mistake about it, make no mistake about it, if you keep harboring a grudge then it will eventually destroy you. If not physically, certainly emotionally and spiritually. It will make you a bitter and twisted person. And the book of Job in chapter 21 describes people who have no happiness at all. And they live and die with bitter hearts. Do you really want to be 
Uh, that, do you really want that to be the way you are remembered? Do you remember that, par- that, do you remember that parable that Jesus told about the servant who was forgiven a huge debt by the king and then refused to forgive someone else in a tiny amount? Jesus said this is unforgiven spirit. Land- Jesus said his unforgiven unforgive- spirit landed him in prison. <clears throat> Excuse me. Max, Max Licato makes this interesting comment in one of his books. He says, Unforgiven servants always end up in prison, prisons of anger, guilt, and depression. And God says to you in His Word, Don't sentence yourself to prison. Set yourself free. Give up your grudges. Forgive each other, whatever you may have against that, that, uh, that person or, or one another. And according to God's word, the way to give up a grudge is to forgive. It's just that simple. Notice that God is saying here, He isn't asking you to ignore whatever the person has done to you. He isn't asking you to pretend it, it, it didn't happen. He doesn't ask you to condone it, to pretend it didn't matter, but what God asks you to do is to forgive the grievance. And that means to acknowledge how wrong and painful what was done to you was, was, but to decide to forgive the person who did the wrong to you. And I'm absolutely certain that there are, there are people here who need to give up their grudges and, and, and forgive the grievance they have against someone else. Some of us need to forgive the grievance you have against your parents or or what they did or what they didn't do. Some of you need to forgive your children for the same reason. And some of you need to forgive a partner or emotional or physical for for emotional or physical abuse. Some of us need to, to give up the grudge you have against someone at work because of the way they treated you. And some of us need to give up the the grudge that stems from an argument we had with with someone long ago. Or even maybe need to forgive, uh, to give up grudges you have against other people in this congregation. God says that the deep-seated resentment you have against that person has to go. And what better time to make that difficult decision to forgive than the start of a new year? Now, don't tell God you can't forgive. Don't tell God you can't forgive, because what you really mean when you say that is you won't forgive. If Christ can forgive you for your sin and my sin, despite the fact that it cost the pain of the cross, then surely you can give up your grievance you have with someone else. And the question is, will you or I do it? The question is, will you or I do it? So the third commitment for 2021 is this. Commit yourself to restore, to restore your relationships. Commit yourself to restore your relationships. Some of you here, uh, some of you that are familiar with computers, know that every time you turn it on, a little window pops up that asks if you, uh, most of the time, if you want to run a check to see if all the programs are, well, are working well occasionally. And God in his word issues a a very similar uh, invitation. It's the invitation not to check to see if your computer software is working properly, but to check whether our personal relationships are working properly. And here's how the Lord issues that challenge. In Romans 12, 18, he says, if it is possible as much as uh, it, it is in you, live peaceably with all men. The important phrase here is, as much as it is, lives in you. God, by using that phrase, has personally challenged each one of us to, to do what we can to restore our relationships. And the Lord wants us to do everything we can to restore any relationship that may have gone wrong in our lives. Some relationships might have gone wrong in our lives because of what other people have done and they might well not want that relationship restored. And God recognizes that. 
That's why he starts by saying, if it's possible. If it's possible. But let's be honest, some of our relations have gone wrong because of what we have done. What we have done. And when God wants, when, when God's word says here, as far as, when God's word says here, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. It is saying if you have caused a rift in a relationship, then you have a responsibility to do everything you can to restore it. And that everything includes the one thing we are probably find most difficult. Asking for forgiveness. I'm sure that I'm not the only person who finds it hardest to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to the people I'm closest to. We take that for advantage of that at times. I wonder how many relationships are not all they should be or, or could be simply because someone won't say, I was wrong, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? I'm certain that some of us need to ask for forgiveness for, for harsh words and cutting remarks that have, that have really wounded others over the years. Maybe God is saying to some of you that, and I include myself in this too, when I say you, I'm not pointing a finger at you all of y'all, and I'm the, the good guy up here, but maybe he's saying to us that this change, uh, that, that this change of year is the right time to restore the relationships you have ruined by going and, and sincerely saying that, that, that we're sorry for those angry words or those selfish and unthoughtful actions. I don't know this, I can't pronounce this fellow's last name. Keith Dury is a writer from the Wesleyan Church and in one of his books he touches on this whole subject of restoring relationships when, he, when talking about restitution. <clears throat> and this is what he says. Restitution deals with more than property. It is also going back and making things right for your hurtful things. For Oh boy, I lost it. <laughs> this is what he says. Restitution, restitution deals with more than property. It is, almost, it is also going back and making things right for hurtful things I've said or done. It's far easier for me to tell you some story than to tell you of the difficult and painful times I've had to ask my wife, my boys, my boss, friends, and secretary to forgive me. Restitution is asking forgiveness for harsh words, quick tongue, or cutting remarks. It is asking forgiveness from a brother you hurt, a mother you caused heartache to, or a former spouse which you hurt. Resti hurt. Restitution is confessing and seeking forgiveness from an old business partner, neighbor, or roommate. It is admitting my past errors in relationships and humbly seeking forgiveness from the one I've hurt. And it's harder to make personal restitution than property restitution. Excuse me. <coughs> make no mistake, it will be hard to, but one of the most significant things that you can do to mark the new year is not set off a firework, but to admit your past errors in relationships and humbly seek forgiveness from the one that you have hurt. So will we rise to that challenge, and, and will, we, will we make a commitment to restore our broken re relationships in this new year? And then the fourth and final commitment for 2021 is to commit yourself to turn your back on your transgressions. Commit yourself to turn your back on your transgressions. While preparing this, uh, I read about the American Civil War and, uh, and it, an interesting fact that after the war was over and the slaves had been set free, many slaves decided to stay with their former master and continue to do what they were, they were told to do. And they were set free, but they chose to, live as, to continue to live as slaves. And the New Testament says that that is exactly how many Christians choose to live. Christ died to set us free, 
Christ died to set us free, and the Holy Spirit has given us the power to be free. And just like those former slaves, many of us, many of us Christians still choose to obey their old master, sin. In Romans 6.12, we read that it says that, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lusts thereof. That is the last challenge that I believe if you will rise to meet, then it will make this new year truly significant for you. And when God says for us to not let sin control the way we live and to not give in to its lustful desires, he is issuing the challenge to turn our backs on our transgressions. Christian writers used to talk about something called besetting sins. And what they meant by besetting sins were uh, practical sins that, that a, 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 I'm sorry, particular sins that a particular Christian has prone to do in time and time again. And for most of us, when we are saved, we give up certain sins easily, but there are other things that we know we are wrong that we really battle with. And those, those are our besetting sins. Many of us end up choosing to give in to our besetting sins and end up living double lives. There was an article online by an anonymous pastor that described his battle with uh, his besetting sin and how he gave in to that sin time and after time and then was overcome by guilt. So maybe that is how you lived over the past year, constantly defeated by that same old sin. There was a man with a, a huge growth on his neck. And he won't, and he won't do anything about it. it uh, he's, he's just learned to live with it. And that sums up too many Christians' attitude through their besetting sin. We don't do anything about it, and we just learn to live with it. We have to ask, I have to ask you, is your spiritual life crippled because you have learned to live with the besetting sin in our lives? Do you have a quick temper that you constantly give into? Or a tongue that loves to assassinate other people's characters or wound their feelings? Have you learned to live with that, that critical judgmental attitude you know is wrong? Is there some other sin that you keep on giving into? God here in His Word challenged us to turn our back on that sin, whatever it is. To stop letting it control the way we live. To stop giving into it. He wants you to stop obeying your old master, sin. So let's be clear about this. Jesus' death broke the power of sin. The Holy Spirit can give us the power to resist it. And that means that we don't have to go into this new year still being defeated by that same old besetting sin. You can have that victory over it. God says you are no longer a slave to sin, so don't live like one or act like one. So if you ask for God's forgiveness for your sin and His power to resist that sin, then, it, then this new year can be for you not just a new era in history, but a new era in your spiritual life. So let's not miss that opportunity. Let's not miss that opportunity. So it all boils down to this. Will this new year be just a calendar changing event for you or are you willing to rise to these challenges from God's word and make these commitments and make it a life changing event? Are you willing to make, to, to make these four commitments uh, for 2021? Will you commit yourself to forget your failures? Will you commit yourself to give up your grudges? Will you commit yourself to restore your relationships? Will you commit yourself to turning your back on your transgressions? And this new year will really be something to celebrate if you'll make forgiveness the heart of what it's all about for you and have that courage uh, right here today to forgive yourself and forget the past, to forgive others who have hurt you and forgive whatever grievances you have and to ask for forgiveness from those you have hurt 
And as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. To ask for God's forgiveness and no longer be a slave to sin. Amen. Father, we just thank you um, as we lead into our communion time, which Brother Chris is going to present to us. Uh, we just thank you, Lord, for a, 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 another day to try and live by these, these challenges, to make a commitment to, to um, check ourselves, to check, to check our spiritual life, our, our spiritual walk, you know, to, to, to draw closer to you. May your Holy Spirit give us power to, to realize that freedom and to live in it and to resist that sin, that, that old, uh, you know, besetting sins in our lives. Again, we just thank you for each and every one that is here. And we uh, pray that each and every one of us have a, uh, a great afternoon. And thank you for our visitors today. Safe travels to and from your destinations.